and welcome back to the Victoria's World Podcast. I'm Victoria. This is episode 50. And today I'm doing things a little differently, but you won't notice it. Basically, I'm using the camera on the back of my phone instead of the front. So I mirroring the video to my computer so I can make sure that I'm in focus. So like when I do things like this, it'll switch back. Hopefully that worked. Yeah, it looks like it's working. There's a delay on the computer though. So if I look over at what's being mirrored to me, I can tell what's in focus and what's, um, what the image, the frame looks like, but like 15 minutes, 15 seconds behind. So anyways, I, um, started, decided to try doing this because I was doing some research on YouTube about how to make the video quality better for filming. Um, I changed the frames per second in my photo um, app. And I also found that you can get better quality if you use the camera on the back of your phone. So anyways, anybody out there who's also doing YouTube, who doesn't know that already, um, there are a lot of great tips. And I finally like looked it up and started to apply some of those things. So hopefully the video, video quality will be better. Um, I enjoy better video quality for my, the, for the knitting podcasts that I watch. The ones that are nicer quality are generally like more appealing to me. So it's important to me to try to do the best I can with the equipment that is available to me. So, um, yeah, I hope that works out. I have just a few things to show today. Um, I did cast on a second project and plans for a few more. And I have my new acquired yarn to show you and some cardigans because I've been wanting to share more of my finished projects from previous years and trying to think about like what categories would be fun to, to talk about. And I was looking at my big wall of um, yarn and finished things that are all in plastic bags like this to protect against moths. You know, if you're watching for a long time, you don't have a moth problem. Um, you're welcome, by the way, for the fact that I took everything out of the bag so there'll be no crinkling happening in the video. So you're welcome for that because sometimes I forget and then I go back and I'm editing it and I'm like, oh, I should have taken everything out because it is annoying and it can be very loud if you're trying to, um, hear my voice and also not get crinkling. Those things kind of don't go together. Anyways, got some yarn, got some cardigans, all of my cardigans. I'm currently wearing one of my cardigans. Um, this is the Ginny by Andrea Mowry, which is one of my favorites. Um, but I'll talk about it in a little bit. The first thing I want to show you is my progress on the great love. No, Gentle Lopi is the name of this one. Um, and I finished the second sleeve yesterday. I've been taking this project really slowly. I may have mentioned already that I, there's no reason for me to finish this, um, in the near future. Let me untangle this thing so I don't rip this very delicate yarn. There's no, um, motivation for me to finish this anytime soon because it's getting warm here. So I won't be able to wear a tunic length Lopi sweater probably until maybe even November. Depends on how our, how warm our autumn is, but sometimes, you know, it doesn't really get cold. Uh, last year, I think it, it was 80 in October. So, um, it might not happen for a long time. So there's no rush. And this yarn is hard on my hands. So it's best if I do it in like little breaks, as opposed to, um, working on it for 10 hours or something. So I'm going slow. Here it is. Sleeve number one. And then sleeve number two. I always leave all of my, um, stitch markers on for as long as possible in the event that I have to pull something out and need to change something. It's just nice to leave them in there just in case. And I've started on the body again. Probably got an inch yesterday. 
It's the kind of, I mean, this is going to be, I think it's a 10 inch body before you split the back and the front and do um, the hem. So it's going to be a lot of knitting. And so I definitely need a progress keeper. Um, yeah, but I've been enjoying it, taking it nice and easy. And um, I did kind of think that doing a brown sweater for a long time, it's just a connect, would be a little boring. And so I was aware that I might need some color um, coming up here just to keep me motivated and, and expire, inspired. So I did see um, a pattern last week on Tuesday and I I uh, got inspired for a couple different reasons. Let me grab the pattern. This is a European pattern by Anne Wenzel. And I'm gonna show you just a picture of the printout here. Um, there we go. Let's see if I can. So it is a elbow length tee with an all over lace knit from the top down. Um, you start knitting in the round and then split and knit the front and the back of the shoulders separately flat. I haven't gotten to that part yet though. Um, I am knitting it in the same color way. I know I just said I will need some color, but that will come into play in a second. Um, I do really like neutral knits. I do love, love color. I wear a lot of color, but there are some things that um, just neutral knits um, just work really well. So here's the beginning of the cast on. I don't know if any of you do this, but um, I usually leave my, if I have more cast on yarn than I really needed. I don't generally cut it. I end up, I wall, I wad it up and then I um, tie it so that I have just, there's a couple of different reasons. I'll, most of the stuff I do in knitting now is just sort of like little tweaks, little things that m probably won't matter, but you know, this is a whole craft based on details. So I do little details like that. And I do it because if you cast on, you have too much yarn left over at the on the end and you cut it to like a reasonable length but then you like mess up the cast on you've wasted a little bit of yarn so in case I cast on multiple times I just don't cut it generally which is true for this I did cast this on twice so um and I did a better better the first time estimating how much yarn I would need than the second time this is way too much so I may cut this at some point I don't know it feels a little shorter but um, I also do it because generally when I can, like on underarms and stuff too, when you join, um, a new bit of yarn to knit a top down sleeve, I generally leave like a lot of room in the, on the end. And then I tie that up as well, because it's nice to have more yarn to work with when you're weaving in ends, especially if you're weaving in underarms. So less important in this kind of situation where you're casting on but um, I definitely try to weave a lot of yarn under each arm to weave in or um, to plug the holes, to, to tidy up the holes that naturally appear. Yeah. So anyways, I learned this from someone else. I saw someone else doing it in a YouTube video a couple of years ago. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they do. And I didn't ask why they did it. I just assumed they did it for the reasons I just said. So I started doing that. Um, anyways, this is the shorty by Anna Benzel, and it's a little bit different of construction than I've done before. So it's also, um, as I said, a European design. So it's not written in kind of the common American style that you see nowadays, which is great because it's like, it stretches my knitting brain and like gets me thinking differently and like making sure that I'm really understanding the pattern and I'm trying really hard to, to not miss anything. So there's definitely some things in here that I'm like, Ooh, I, that's a little bit tr tricky to understand, but I think I've done it right. And, um, 
particularly the way that it's notated about moving the markers that you're not, it's not specifically said. So that's kind of my experience with European designs is there's some stuff that's just not said. And because I have a lot of knitting sweater experience, I can figure it out, but I always feel bad when someone asks me about the pattern, like, what did you think of it? I'm like, well, they're not going to hold your hand, but that doesn't mean you won't be successful. It just means it's a little more, um, requiring intu intu intuition about it. So anyways, um, I have the swatch for this. If you want to see the pattern up close, which I'm sure you do. Um, you do a little bit of eye let and decreases in just the right place and makes this little column. Um, when I saw this pattern, I immediately thought of, wouldn't that make a nice little small kerchief pattern? And I know I mentioned last time that I was thinking about doing some kerchiefs and that it would be fun to do like a set of them with different stitch patterns um, for spring and summer knitting. And this was perfect because it was like, ah, let me try out the stitch pattern. Let me swatch with multiple multiple reasons, one for the pattern I'm going to cast on and another for like a design idea. So I don't know if this one will make it, this stitch pattern will make it into a kerchief. Maybe, maybe not. I kind of want to do three different patterns and I'm thinking just like a little one that you can wrap around once and tie. And uh, I'm using yarn I had in my stash um, linen quill from Pearl Soho, which is one of my favorite yarns. This is the wheat flour. And I had four of these in my stash for a different, it's like two ideas ago. I had an idea for a striped black and white sweater. And then I had another idea for a black and white sweater that I, in my mind, was like, okay, I'll use a linen quill for that instead of that. And then last week I was like, oh, well, I have linen quill. And I looked it up on the website. It happened to be on sale. So I got more. So I have enough for the surety, and then I bought four more for one of those other sweaters um, sometime. But I love, I love an, a very um, warm, like balanced oatmeal yarn color. I really do. And it was on sale. That's why I got more. Um, I think this yarn is usually $19 for 439 yards, which is pretty good. It's a fingering weight. Usually um, get more yardage when you're buying a finger weight skeins. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a good deal at full price. And they were, I think, $4 less. So I got some colors. If you've ever been on the Pearl Soho website, you know they have beautiful yarn colors and particularly linen quilt, which is um, wool and alpaca and linen blend. They have stunning colors and some of them are more heather than others, but I've always wanted to buy, I always want to buy lots of colors and like get a bunch of, I don't know, rainbows are really attractive when you look at yarn in a rainbow. And practicality, maybe not for um, garments, but it's certainly is exciting when I see it. So I got just colors that I was attracted to because I thought if I do a kerchief, I could do one kerchief easily with one skein of this. So I'll just get a few different colors that I'm really attracted to. So that was super fun. This is raw sienna. So this is just a really light caramel with, um, the linen fibers are, are are poking out white, and some of the uh, alpaca it looks like is white as well. Yeah, really lovely. And then this one is rose granite. A beautiful adult pink, I would say. A little mauvey, a little bit, but only really, I think, in comparison to other colors. You know, when you like hold two colors up together, they really do change the way that they both look. Um, 
And I got a skein of rosewood pink, which looks beautiful in comparison with the other pink that I got. And then I have chestnut red, which is got a lot of white fibers in it. And so the, these three warm pinks are a fun combination. And then the last one I got is turmeric yellow because I wanted a really bright, happy color. They have really lovely yellows. So all together, which none of them will, they, I won't be using them all together, but they do have this, this warm, wonderful spring palette, which is fun. Anyways, new yarn is always lovely. Lovely, lovely. So we'll see which one I'm drawn to first, and I'm going to look through some stitch pattern books and find some some um, stitches that I think will will have very nice definition in a yarn like this. It's, it's pretty textured. Um, it does have a halo, and um, yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see the halo off of. Uh, maybe not. It's a, little it's a little fuzzy. It's not like a mohair. The Shorty uses Sager Trio 2, which is a blend of linen, cotton, and lyocell, I think. So plant fibers. I think lyocell is a plant fiber as opposed to a synthetic fiber. I can't remember. Um, and I, it has, the, the pattern has a very mohair -y look to it, I think. I mean, but I know that cotton and linen are pretty heavy fibers. So I think at first I was like, maybe this is too dense. Like it's not as airy or light as I'm imagining it, you know? And so I was really trying to, I looked for the Isager, it's Isager Trio 2 held together with Alpaca 1, I think is the 100% Alpaca yarn that they make, or one of them. I don't know a lot about their yarns. I'm trying to think if I've even ever used them or if I've ever owned, if I even own any Sager. It's a Danish yarn. So I did look for the original, you, the original yarns used. I just couldn't find anything in the U.S. that I felt was affordable. It was, it was like one site I found that seemed to jack up the price. I don't know if that's really true. Um, but I was like, I don't know if it, if I want to drop $150 on yarn right now and then I was like I have Pearl Soho linen quills so that might work I'm holding um them together doubled and this yarn is just so lovely to work with it's a nice counter to the low B because um this is softer and um has more give to it I put it into this new prickly owl co bag that I got she had a um a shop update and I haven't gotten any of her have not gotten a bag of hers in a long time so it was fun to get just I didn't actually get it for knitting I thought I would use this for um when I travel and I bring a lot of highlighters with them because I'm really highlighter obsessed and pens and stuff and um like little things I thought I would throw them all in here but it does happen to fit this project right now it won't as it gets bigger but um, anyways threw in here super cute Okay, um, the other thing I want to talk about is what I'm wearing. This is the Ayaya shawl. Let me find the bit where I've tied it together here. Um, I released this knitting pattern in 2000. When was that? 2020, I think. It's a, it's a pattern I a design I wear year round, but it really suits the spring because of the color and because of all the eyelets. Um, it's nice to knit eyelets in the spring and summer. Um, 
it's big. It's a big asymmetrical. It's one of those ones where you start in the corner and you knit on the bias. So you start with this little bit and then you knit and it um, angles and keeps going until you get to the center bit. And then I decrease all these stitches off in one go, which is so fun. It, it means that you can um, just cast off when you run out of yarn, if you want. It's a great stash buster for that reason. Um, I used a homespun house. Um, I think it was called Dale. I'm not sure what she's calling it now. It's her non super wash fingering weight yarn. I think that was a two ply, three ply maybe. It's really lovely, so soft. It's perfect for shawls. Um, and I used a a Oliver lace pattern with a, these little strips of garter. So really fun. I want to knit another one, um, and maybe the little version because there's two versions in the pattern. This is the big one. And then the little one stops at like one less, I think. So this last panel here, it actually stops at this one instead. So it's more like this sized. So it can go around your neck like once. A little kerchief, you might say. Um, yeah, this is lovely. This is the rose gold. So it does have a, a tonal um, gentle changes in the yarn. Um, just really lovely. It's probably one of my most popular designs. And um, I brought it out to pair, pair with an outfit with a linen jacket and a pair of shorts that was probably too cold to wear, but I was coming up with outfits that incorporated knitting hand knits in them. And so I, I thought that would look cute and it does. And I, and it's actually going to be warm enough this week. I think we're going to hit 75 a couple times. Um, and that I can bring the shorts out and maybe wear the, that cute little outfit together. So I'll talk about the first one I'm wearing. So this is Ginny by Andrea Mowry. It has a fold down neckline that you make with short rows in um, garter stitch. And it has a lovely texture. That's like every few rows you do a, a, um, a pearl section and it has a tie. So I love this one. I knit it in um, Harrisville Nightshades, which is a Cormo DK. And uh, has little belt loops that I probably need to reattach because I didn't do a good job the first time around. Um, but I really love it. And if I leave it out, <laughs> I really only wear the knits that I leave out. But if I leave it out, I, I reach for it every day. It's just wonderful. Um, in general, I was thinking about like what I want to knit in the future, I need to knit more cardigans and I think I need to knit more cardigans in lighter weights. So <laughs> which of course is hard because it takes a long time. Um, like knitting a cardigan in linen quill would be a really good use of yarn and my time because I would wear this all, I would wear this every day. It just, it's just nice to have lighter layers. And then the thing is I get to wear all my t-shirts and stuff. That's what I really like about cardigans is you can still wear like when I wear a pullover, the pullover is generally like the piece. Everything in my outfit sort of revolves around the pullover. So if you wear a cardigan, you can kind of like, you know, mix woven patterns and stuff like that. And that's just really fun. So I, I need to knit more cardigans. And I think I have more cardigans than I can, thought I did. All of them, I think this is the lightweight, the lightest weight cardigan. I don't have any sport or fingering weight cardigans. That's so crazy. Gosh, I really, <laughs> really need to change that. Um, 
but I have two, four, six, apparently eight cardigans. I should probably go in order of what I knit first because it's nice to do things in order. I was going to, um, I keep saying this, like, I'm going to look at my notes and figure out what my fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth sweaters were. Cause I talked about my sweaters one through four in an episode, but I don't know where that notebook is. It's one of these little black moleskins that are my, it's my notes. And I don't know where that went. And I'm a little we're afraid of starting to dig for it and what I'll find, you know, when you're like, don't want to go through your stuff because mm, it's, it's a sketch. It's a scary out there. <laughs> um, the first one is, I guess I should not button it up quite so quickly here or unbutton it. This is the Arctic pullover by Carrie Bostic Hodge. And um, it's knit with Brooklyn Tweed Quarry, which is a bulky yarn. I think it's bulky. I guess it could be Aaron. I think it's bulky though. It got has gotten a lot of wear in the past. I do desperately need to depill this. Um, and I have a gleaner, which is one of the best knitting tools. Uh, I probably need to glean all of my sweaters, but it's just one of those things that I just haven't done. Um, it has nice big buttons and uh, little pockets. And I really, yeah, top down raglan, um, really cozy, very warm. I would knit this pattern again. I think it would be fun to make it again. I don't know the colorway name, but it's the only one in the quarry collection that is an oatmeal-y color. I think number two is this one. Maybe. This is Timberline. Timberline? Timberline? Timberline by um, Silvery Shannon is her username on Instagram. It's Shannon Cook. She lives in um, British Columbia. It has all these stunning lines. She's twisted rib to make um, beautiful lines that go all the way up the arm. And I think you're in the middle of the back, right? Yeah. Two in the middle of the back. Ooh, other way. And um, a deep hem with pockets built in. So this one is, um, worse weight. This is peace fleece. <laughs> this is my only other piece of sweater besides the one I finished recently. Um, this is such a nice yarn and I think it's tricky to, to find the right that's a current, that's a thought. Um, if I feeling like I need an extra layer and this is maybe a little too cold, I bet you I could wear one of my tank tops in wool underneath this. And then I would feel just more like, more like a pullover, a little extra warmth. So yeah, I like this one a lot. It's fun to try on sweaters I have not worn in a while and be like, how do I feel about it now? <laughs> I was definitely a keeper. Um, I, this is probably one of the first ones I remember lengthening the back in, like before you <coughs> do the armholes. No, cause this isn't it flat. I think you do a front and a front and a front, and then you do the back and those are knit flat. And I made them longer before I, connected them, the front and the back together. And so it was one of the first times I actively modified something to be like better fitting. And it does have a nice ease in the armhole. It's not like sitting up in here because a lot of times that's what happens. If I follow my size for my bust, 
circumference, then I have shoulder issues because they're, I have pretty wide shoulders for how small my bust is. Okay, that's number two, I think. Number two. Um, then it's probably these two. So these are the Felix. I talked about these, um, in my Lopi episode. Um, this is the Felix Cardigan by Amy Christoffers. Very, very accessible pattern for beginning sweater makers. I knit it in Lopi, which is the suggested yarn. I love this one. It's so light, but super warm. So if you don't like heavy, bulky sweaters, this would be a good choice. And um, I put little fun buttons on it um, that have clocks. And um, yeah, it was just like perfect. Love this sweater. Um, I tried to knit it again and made it too big. So I guess I will try that on. I need to rip this sweater out and then knit it again, which I will do someday. <laughs> I even put the buttons on it and I blocked it. It's too big because I didn't swatch again. I thought, oh, well, I knit this already in the same yarn and I'll just make it with the same needle sizes and it should work out. And it's not, <laughs> it's true, not true. It's a great color. It's just too big in the shoulders. And because I had such a perfect fitting one in the gray, it's just to me like far too, far too big. I'm sure it looks fine, um, but yeah, it's just like a no go. And I've always planned to take it out. So I've just never worn it. It could be, um, it, but the collar, yeah, it's just too big for me. Anyways. If it was the first one I'd ever made, I probably wouldn't have noticed. I probably would be wearing it, but you know, you just get stuck in your head sometimes. And because I have the plans to redo it, I just put it in the bag and left it for several years. Um, then I probably made the Ginny, the blue one I was wearing earlier. That was probably the next one. Um, maybe, maybe it was this one. This is uh, Kinnikin by <sighs> oh I can see a picture of her in my mind Tara Lynn Morrison I think is her name but what's her business name good night day she makes a lot of really beautiful bulky knits and I this is the Kinnikin I used all these different skeins of Malabrigo Rasta, which is a bulky yarn, and I had acquired a lot of it at one point, and so I um, blended them together. I don't know if you can tell where. The colors change, but um, they were close enough. You know, some of them are more, like, purpley, and then it gets more red and then more orange. So those are all like slightly different skeins that I just blended together um, and created something really fun. It also needs to be depilled. This is a very a pilly yarn. It's almost like roving um, and it would benefit from a good gleaning too, but it's super, super fun. And um, I didn't buy yarn for it. I just used what I had it is on the heavy side. It isn't once I put it on. It's more like comparing it in the bag to like other sweaters. Um, but yeah, it's very, very fun. Probably my most colorful project. And um, I knit it twice because the first time I knit it way too big and then I ripped it back and, and uh, yeah, did it again. Uh, that leaves the two that I worked on last year around this time. This is the Flam. Flam? I think it's Flam. F-L-A-U-M. Justina is the first name of the designer. I'll have to post it below. I've already forgotten. Yeah, this is a great one. I wear this a lot. Um, it has Fisherman's Rib on a lot of the body, 
and um, shawl collar and um, it goes with a lot of things. Also needs to be gleaned. <laughs> I should probably do a, a gleaning series and be like, I'm going to glean a sweater every week or every day or something. Um, but yeah, it has pockets. Super cute. Um, I love this one. Very warm. The fisherman's rib, especially, um, is very dense and uh, enjoyable. Enjoyable to wear. Very squishy. And then the last cardigan I wear all the time. Also knit it last spring. I think I finished it right before summer. I think, I, no, I finished it in July. And then I've been wearing it a lot. It's great um, to wear with other knits underneath it. It's a little bit oversized, but not too much. Give you the back. It's very long, goes all the way down to my knees. It's got an overall stitch pattern of knits and pearls. It's really easy. And, um, had a packet. And uh, it's made out of lopey. Oh, I knit the flam out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, by the way, that last one. Um, and uh, it's, it's very lightweight. And this one is a little heavier. Knit with lopey, let lopey. And um, it is a little itchy, of course. But I get used to it. It's like you gotta like, get it warm. Is one way I've heard people talk about mohair being like initially prickly, but like it like the fibers like kind of flatten out as they press against your skin and it gets warmed up, and then it's not not so bad. But um, I do love wearing other sweaters underneath this one. So yeah, that's my cardigan collection. I need to do more, obviously, and lighter weight ones because they. I'd love to wear um, cardigans more in the warmer months too, you know, when things get chilly in the evening and I just need a little bit, a little bit more, it would be nice to have a, some neutral ones, some fun ones, maybe color work. I don't know. Um, which does remind me that I did think of earlier too, of like I should pull out all my color work sweaters because that would be fun. Okay. That's all from me. Hopefully I will um, have some some uh, new some things to show you soon Maybe. anyways I hope you're knitting something fun and I'll see you next time